We are sharing the story of John Furness, a woodworker in Washington State with an incredible imagination. His, his creations are a combination of his unique outlook on life and his skills with power tools. And by the way, uh, he's handling those power tools and doing all that all else he does uh, with one of the most important things that an artist needs, without one of the most important things an artist needs. Jamie Yukis met Furness at his home to find out how dark days in his past helped lead to a brighter future. Sound, touch, smell, important senses for anyone who creates art or appreciates it. John Furness is a Washington woodworker whose wares are handmade in a small shop adjacent to his home. He's also blind. When you are using the saw and using the mm -hmm. lathe, you're doing all that on your own. Yeah. No yeah. one's coming in there to help you. Nope. I have a very healthy respect <laughs> shaded with a bit of fear around the table saw. <laughs> the first bowl I made, I... I had my finger in a place that it shouldn't have been, <laughs> and I wasn't paying attention, and I got hurt pretty bad. Trail of blood like a wounded cowboy all the way to the back door. The first bowl you made is actually right behind my head. There's a little bit of blood in that bowl. It's genetically verifiable that that is my bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Furness found his knack for this work after attending a wood shop class in a vocational rehab program. The biggest difference between a blind and sighted woodworker is the way we measure things. He credits memory and imagination for his ability to adapt. How did you become the blind woodworker? I attempted suicide when I was 16. Luckily, I only lost my sight and sense of smell and my mind and my brain was left completely intact. How have you been able to turn that and really be as positive and as happy as you are? I've chosen to laugh at life. <laughs> so I, uh, I left the lawnmower by the back stairs one time and I did like a, a sideways barrel roll <laughs> over the top of it <laughs> and laughing so hard because the image of me doing that goes through my mind. So I, I've chosen to, to laugh at life as much as I can. Furness, now 40, once repaired pianos at a school for the blind. But his passion shifted after a chance encounter with a volunteer. I was painting a piano for this fundraiser and I'm sitting in this room, you know, painting and John walks in, he puts his hand on the wet paint on the piano. And so it was like kind of like a meet cute. I got up the nerve to ask him out first. He said, hey, why don't we go pick peas at my community garden plot? It was the most <laughs> romantic first date I'd ever been on. And three years later, we got married in the same spot. Annie knew that my talents and my passion really laid with woodwork. So she bought me a lathe. Lathe workers a lot of times are called turners. And so this is Kathleen Turner. <laughs> but just below the surface of his ever-present smile, the lingering pain of his past. What is getting you so emotional right now? Oh, just give me a second. You got it. I don't know why it's hitting me so hard this year. The anniversary of my attempt was on the day. <laughs> on the 10th? The couple takes a trip to the ocean every year to reflect on the moment that took his sight, but not his life. I try to do something special um, to celebrate that the mm -hmm. fact that he's still here. Yeah. You know, that, that he was given a second chance. A second chance to build this bond, a business, and a brand. What's with the name? I don't know, I just, I've always had kind of a quirky sense of humor. <laughs> and so, uh, the, you know, the Blind Woodsman. <laughs> the Blind Woodsman is an online store where the furnaces sell John's functional works of art. He runs the tools, she runs the business. You have almost two million people now following you on TikTok. Hey, sweetie. How's it going, honey bee? Good. What's, What's the feedback you get? People are really inspired by a few things. They're inspired by John's story, incredible story. And then they're inspired by our love. What you working on? I just got done with this bowl here. I read somewhere you said, I lost my sight to gain my vision. Yes, yes, I truly believe that. I really, over the years, have come to the belief that I am supposed to be blind. That's something that I needed to have to become the man I am. There we go. For CBS Mornings, Jamie Yukis, Washougal, Washington.
Wow. Yeah. That's powerful. That's a big wow on many levels. I like I lost my sight to gain my vision. I love the two of them together. Hi, sweetie. Hi, honeybee. Yeah, hey, honeybee. <laughs> it's a love know, story. I, I'm fascinated that he can do that work with a, and working with a saw and that equipment yeah. and not being able to but see. It's, it's such a good reminder that everything hard in your life made you who you are now. Yes. And you can't throw any bit out and still be who you are. So his yes. appreciation for the difficulty on his path and how he feels he always was meant to be where he is right now yeah. is important. And, and think about that. Like, he can't see, but he found a love, love. of his life. Yep. He found passion and he found purpose. Right. Like, that's deep. Right. It is deep.